I'm a huge fan of these standard focal lengths. You know, you're 35, you're 50, you're 85, not using zoom lenses, but I mean, just look at this thing. Look at how pretty this is. This is the Sigma 150 to 600 sport lens. I asked them to borrow it so I could do some tests because I've never used a lens that's this big, this heavy, this much of a zoom, 600 millimeters, that's a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why you would want something that's this big, this big of a super telephoto lens, and a few reasons why you probably don't. Reason number one why you would want a lens like this is when you cannot physically get any closer. So the things that come to mind are sports, wildlife, and maybe even something like a wedding where you can't go beyond a certain pew in the church because of Catholic reasons, you know, who knows? This would enable you to make it seem like you're actually closer. So I wanted to test this out with some sport stuff. So I went and did some surf photo and video work and 600 mil still sometimes isn't quite enough if you wanna get really close on someone even if your toes are touching the water, depending on how far the waves are out there. But something like this would be perfect for wildlife. So if something comes up close to you, you can zoom out to 150, still get what you need. Same with sideline sports photography or video. I'm thinking at like a football game or a soccer game where you can't physically step onto the field. For a basketball game or something like that, this might be a little too much unless you're at the opposite end of the court and you're trying to get some shots that way. But in that case, when people are on your side of the court, it's probably gonna to be too zoomed in, even at 150 mil. So that's where you're probably gonna to have to be using two bodies. So it starts to add up expense-wise when you have a lens like this, because you might need to carry another camera body that is a wider focal length. The second reason why you might want a lens like a super telephoto is if you're in a location or an area where the background is extremely distracting and you want to kind of just blur it out. When you're at 150 mil or all the way to 600 millimeter taking a portrait or filming a video, the background just kind of goes away. It gets compressed, there's a lot of bokeh, and you don't really see what's behind someone. Now, it can be really cinematic looking, but can also be really distracting if you're completely separate from your background. Sometimes it just looks like a green screen. A third reason would be to get some sort of crazy effect. In the movie Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, there is a scene where two guys are standing at the end of a runway, the plane is flying kind of right at them, and it looks like they're gonna get hit by the plane, but because of the compression of the lens, the plane's actually pretty far away. So you can do a similar thing when you're zoomed all the way into 600 millimeter, you can put someone in front of something and it looks like the thing behind them is a lot closer than it is, but it's actually pretty far away. A fourth reason why you might want a big lens like this would be if you're trying to capture the moon or the sun, whether that's during an eclipse, a sunrise, a sunset, or just the moon during a supermoon phase or something else that you want to capture. You're gonna want a ton of zoom for something like that. And what this enables you to do is put things in front as well and really compress the sun and the moon with a subject like a person in front of it. You can capture some really cool shots this way. And if you put this on a crop sensor body, then you're gonna multiply it. So if your crop is 1.6 or something like that on the smaller Canon DSLRs like the 7Ds or the 80Ds, you're going to actually multiply that 600 by 1.6. So it's gonna be over 900 millimeters. So you can use crop sensors to an advantage when you have a longer lens to multiply it like that or add adapters and things like that. If you're really trying to get the moon or the sun completely to fill up the frame in your photos or videos. And now four reasons why you might not want to buy a super telephoto lens or take it with you. Number one, the size and the weight. This thing is huge. It's way bigger than any other lenses that I own probably put together. I could probably carry four to five of my other lenses for the weight of this one, as well as where I would store it in a bag. So you have to think about, are you actually going to take it with you when you're doing your photo or video work? And are you going to be able to handle carrying it all the time for that weight? The second reason you're probably not going to want a lens like this is if you are filming in a public place, out and about, maybe you're at a sporting event or something like that and you don't have a proper badge that your media, you know, this thing, it's not going to be very easy to blend in with a rig like this, something this heavy, this big, you're gonna get asked to leave 
in even public parks and things like that sometimes because people might think you're spying on people. Um, I've been asked outside the Louvre to not film there just because I had a cinema camera, whereas everyone else with their smaller cameras and their phones was doing the exact same thing as me, but because my camera was bigger, security had an issue. So just ha have that in mind when you are using a big lens like this, you're gonna stand out, you're gonna get kicked out. The third reason you're probably not going to want a lens like this is stabilization. So look at this thing, this is only at 150. If I go to 600, look at how front heavy this thing becomes. So even if I'm holding it here and I'm doing this and I have it set to stabilize, it's not gonna be very stabilized at 600 mil. You're gonna be definitely wanting to use something like a monopod at a minimum or a tripod that's really sturdy. And even a step up from there, they have gimbals that you can put on top of a tripod to also help with some of the movement. Um, the one that I know of is called the Wembley and you put this and you mount it under the lens or on your camera body and it enables just a little bit more smooth movement to limit the amount of jitters you'll get in video or to minimize the shake for the photos you're taking. The fourth reason why you should not get one of these is if you're a creep. If you're a creep, I don't want you to have a zoom lens. I want you to stay away from me. I don't want you to be looking in my windows. I don't want you to be taking photos of me when I don't know it. So if you're a creep, don't get one of these. Just, just don't, just stay home. So telephoto lenses super telephotos. They're really long, they're really heavy, and unless you really need one of these, I wouldn't get one. But if you do do sports photography, if you do wildlife photography, if you're wanting to just creep on people, you know, this is the perfect lens for that. So definitely check it out. Links to this one uh, will be below. They have a sport version and a contemporary version, which is the cheaper one. So check those out as well. But Sigma lenses, the real sharp, the real good. Thanks to them for sending this to me to test out and to show a little bit of the, the footage and photos that I got with it with you all. And thanks so much for watching this video. Like I said, links below to this and other super telephoto lenses I recommend are below.